the bell icon to turn on notifications. Like we discussed in the past lesson, macros are similar to analytic apps in the sense that you can design the user's interface and modify how it will affect the backend workflow. But instead of creating a program for non-designer users, macros are inserted into another workflow to reduce redundant processes. And instead of having an app window, macros use the interface tools to display user options in the configuration window. We can also use macros with and without any configuration options. Generally, there are four different types of macros. Standard macros are designed to compile a process in a workflow into one tool that can be inserted to a different workflow. This is the type used when you only need to insert a similar process flow into your workflow. Batch macros run multiple times in a workflow to create an output on each run. The number of times that it will run will depend on the number of records or by a specific group of rows. This is useful if you are creating several outputs from categorical data. Iterative macros run in the workflow according to a set number of times or continuously until a condition is met. You can think of it as a macro that is similar to a loop functioning in programming. Local optimizer macros is a type of iterative macro which can be used in network analysis to identify an optimal location or locations. For this introductory class, we are going to create a simple standard macro from this workflow then cleanse the street address data. As always, make sure that you already have a functioning workflow before converting it to a macro. This standard workflow will automatically convert to a macro if we add a macro input tool to our canvas. Drag a macro input from the interface and place it above the input data. As we can see from the workflow types configuration, it was automatically set to a standard macro. You can also set a different type of macro by using this dropdown. A macro input tool sets an input anchor to your macro. In its configuration, you can set a specific type or text template input to test if the macro is working properly. Here, we're going to point it to our test address dataset by selecting the File Input Radio button, click Configure, then choose File, and select the file from the File Browse window. You can also automatically change your existing input data in the canvas into a macro input tool by selecting the tool, right click, then choose Convert to Macro Input. This can also be done when you are using a text input tool. Next, type in an input name. This will be the name for the tab that displays in the Macro Tools configuration window. Let's type in Street Address. Then, on the anchor abbreviation, set a letter or number to display in the macro's input anchor. This is limited to one character only. Let's set this to the character S. Let's enable the Show Field Map. This will show a prompt to your macro user to map their own field to be used in the macro. To see how its configuration window will look, let's navigate to the Interface Designer, then click on the Test View tab. Since we only have one field in our test data, the user only has to map one field, which is the street address column. You can also set the input anchor as optional if it is not mandatory in your workflow. You only need to enable the optional incoming connection. To be able to show the results of the macro to the user, you need to add a macro output. This tool will add an input anchor to your macro and will control how output anchors will be displayed. You can add multiple macro output tools to create multiple output anchors in your macro. Drag a macro input tool into the canvas and connect it to the data cleansing tool. You can also convert a browse tool into a macro output by clicking on the browse tool, right click, then select convert to macro output. The macro output only has two configurations, the output name and the anchor abbreviation. Type in clean sheet address for the output name and put the character O for the anchor abbreviation. Once done, click on the run button to test if our macro is functioning properly. You can customize the tool icon of the macro by navigating to the interface designer window, 
Click on the Properties icon and choose whether you want a standard icon which has a curated list of shapes in different colors created by Altrix or a custom icon where you can set your own image. Let's insert our own custom icon by selecting Custom Icon, then click on Browse and select your icon image from the File Browse window. This will convert the image into 41 by 41 pixels in size. We can also set up a help page hyperlink. This will be the web page that the users can look at if they click on the help icon of the macros configuration window. The output field changes based on macros configuration or input option will make the macro remember the output fields from its last run. Now we can save this macro to our desired path. Before doing so, make sure that the file type is set to standard macro in the workflow configuration. Press Ctrl and S to save the workflow into a macro. Then select a path and a file name. We will name this macro as Address Cleaner. To insert the macro into your workflow, right click then select Insert Macro then select the macro you've recently saved. If it is not on the list, you can click on Browse and navigate to your macro's file path. You can now map the field of the address to be cleaned and run the workflow. Now we have successfully cleaned the address field using the macro that we created. Altrix has several other interface tools that can help you in creating your own analytic applications and macros. For showing the options to your user, you can use the following. Checkbox tool displays a checkbox option. The results will either be true if it is checked or false if it is not. Do take note that this is only for one checkbox option. If you wanted a multiple checkbox to select and deselect values, it would be better to use a list toolbox that we have discussed in the earlier lesson. Drop down tool are for single selection lists. You can pass the value of the user selection in the dropdown to the process tools in your backend workflow. Radio button tool, which will display a mutually exclusive selection. The user can only choose one from the list of the options if you choose this type of selection. To let the user select their own values, you can utilize date tool. This will show a calendar on the app slash macro and let them select a specific date. Map tool will display an interactive map for the users to draw on or select points of a location. Numeric up down tool will show a numeric control in the interface and the users can adjust the numeric value by using the arrow up or down. Text box tool to set a freeform text box. You might or might not have noticed, but some of the tools in the palette are macros. To view which tools are macros, you can navigate to Options, User Settings, Edit User Settings, Canvas, and enable the Display Macros Indicators on Tools. This will show a small plus icon under each tool that were actually macros. You can click on these plus icons to open and view the underlying workflow. A few examples of these are the Data Cleansing Tools, Count Record Tool, Random Sample Tool, and the Weighted Average Tool. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.